Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. Back with the three amigos. How you doing, Dion? Howdy, I'm doing great. Ready for round two. Matt, how are you? It's Thursday. I'm just excited to be here. So guys, what I want to talk about is some of the latest and greatest housing data, some data that it came out after my live stream this morning about the daily financial news. So I will cover this tomorrow as well in depth. But I wanted to get your reaction. All three of us are actively looking for deals. We do deals. Mm -hmm. We do every great deal we can. Mm -hmm. And I think we've all been very clear. All of us believe the real estate market is changing right now. Um, we also uh, believe that the rising rates is having a demand destruction. We've also believe, I believe that FOMO from the buyers is quickly moving to FOMO from the sellers. So before I dive into the latest stats that came out yesterday and today, why don't uh, I give each of you a chance to talk about what you see going on in the market, good or bad. Uh, and again, your buy box, your state, your market. Matt, I'll let you go first. Um, my buy box is basically non-existent. There is one property in my still. three towns. Still, it's garbage. Uh, everything sells for over list. There's still multiple offers on everything. Um, and you're in New Hampshire, yeah? I'm in New Hampshire, yep. Yep, on this, uh, right, on this, right on the coast. The coast and two towns north of that. Um, but what we are seeing, one of the things that I'm always watching is air DNA for short-term rentals. Mm. And so I don't own any, but I like to understand what's going on in that market. And one of the things that I thought was really interesting that they came out with was demand year over year, like what you and I've been talking about, what, what, all, what we've all been talking about as far as experiences, um, demand is up 25% in STRs. Really? Yeah. But here's the more interesting number. The average daily rates. So the rate that you're paying for the, for the room or unit is up 11.9%. Oh. So that's kind of interesting as well. Demand the, up, price up. Revenue up 39%. Oh, absolutely. Now, available listings are higher. They're 1.25 million listings. Of short-term rentals in your area? No, 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 no. That's nationwide. Okay, thank that's God. Nationwide. Those are nationwide numbers. Yeah, not... New Hampshire has 1.3 million people. I it's was going to say, what the hell are people market. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. A yurt on a mountainside. There you go. Um, okay, all right. But, but I think what's, what was most interesting to me is this was the stuff that I was starting to see. I didn't see so much those those numbers in my market, but here's the numbers I saw in my market. Okay. Nights booked were down 3.6% year over year. So let me get this right. The first number you gave us was national numbers. Correct. Now you're this, going local. Nope. This is so. This is still national, but I, this is what I'm confirming and seeing in my market as Got well. It. So okay okay, okay. okay. So these are the trends. So those national trends, I'm not seeing that a whole lot in my market. Got it. These these national trends, these are the ones I am seeing in my market. Now I'm with you. Okay. So you know, nights booked were down 3.6 percent year over year. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. I I've been interesting. I called something like that because I think we did. Yeah. I think what we're seeing is last summer was kind of the perfect Airbnb short-term rental yeah. storm, right? Mm -hmm. We want a vacation, but we can't go on an airplane. Yep. So we're going to go local. Now it's like, screw it. I got some money. I'm getting my, you know, wetsuit and I'm going to the Caribbean or Europe or something. Coral, Florida, or yeah, something like that. whatever. Right. But it's not an Airbnb, right? Or at least it's not a United States based Airbnb. It's out of the country. So, so yeah. So the last number there that was really interesting to me is occupancy. Uh -huh. is down 1.7% year over year to only 60%. Well, wow. look at the guy, right? Look at the people that modeled a business after STRs, short-term rentals. Now you're down to 60%. At what point, like I get that you're getting double. Well, if you're getting only double what you're what I'm getting for a long-term rental, you're in trouble because you're working on a lot slimmer margin as that. Oh yeah, the turnover. Grow. The turnover right. is, is and cost and everything else. So you might, you need to be getting triple, but the last number that I'll leave you with that I think is the most kind of thought provoking out of all of this is that overall occupancy down 1.7 year over year to only 60%. Yeah. They actually recognized a trend in tertiary cities okay. and non uh, like mountaintop and like non-real destination places, mm -hmm. that's what's actually taking the hit. It's the urban centers that are actually seeing the increases. Yeah. It's, um, 
I actually know people in the short-term business because I've been kind of negative the last nine months or so. So they come and attack me on occasion. Sure. A lot of them build models. Um, they're telling people to build models at 80%. That's nowhere near that. Now, again, if you're telling somebody to build at 80% and your last summer was 95% plus, mm -hmm. and, but the problem is, you're, again, the All In podcast, they have this quote. I'm going to keep giving them credit. They're basically saying the last two years was cocaine and Red Bull fueled. Everything was all out of whack. The fact that Airbnbs and VRBOs averaged 95 or 97 or whatever it was, not repeatable. No. There's a business there, yes. But if you overpaid, right. and now you're going back to average at 60, you're going to go broke slowly. And if you overpaid and you don't have a plan B as a long-term rental, you're going to go broke slowly. Right. And that's, that's and, and that's where I've been doing my research, which is, okay, what is that number, right? Based on a 60% rate, and AirDNA is phenomenal at this. They'll show you. AirDNA. Yeah, AirDNA. Phenomenal site. I look at it very often because I, I have considered being on, you know, on the seacoast. Yeah. I've considered some of those high options. Yeah, but you have a lake house is an example. I do, I do. And so looking at some of that stuff, but what's very interesting is the numbers are saying otherwise. If like you were saying, which is you're in a secondary city, you're trying to rent a place out. Yeah. There's a hundred other units on the market. Those are the ones that are bringing down that average. Yeah. Those are the ones that are getting hurt. Those are the ones that are getting hit with literally occupancy down to 60.2%. That's going to make a lot of people shake a little bit. Yeah. I mean, people have to be experiencing that because again, at that number, you have to be three X what I charge a month yeah. to make your numbers work. And you're probably only making this much a margin and it's a lot more heavy lifting. Oh yeah. Weekend turn. Uh, yeah. Again, I think Airbnb VRBO had its summer. I still think it's a long, like Anna Kelly beachfront. It's one of four properties on the yep. water. Yep. You're going to be fine. But you're also spending, you're also spending a million bucks. Well, you're spending it. Yeah. You're spending them. So I looked at one and it was $3 million. Mm -hmm. And so I looked at the property and I ran the numbers and I was like, well, thank you for the negative yield. It was negative. Yeah, that's, it. that's no good. Negative. Yeah. And, was, yeah. and then they were like, well, but you can rent it out in the winter time. I said, I counted the winter rental months. You guys are yeah, exactly. you're crazy. I was like, did you not run these numbers before you put the thing up for sale? But yeah. to that end, that thing does like 3,000 a week times eight units. It does $24,000 a week in the summer. Yeah. We only have three weeks, three months of summer. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, congratulations. Good. You made 96,000 bucks a month times three, yeah. you know, $288,000. Yeah. Crazy. Don't cover it. Dion, what are you seeing in your market before I get into this, the national stats? Sure. So there's two things. Um, first, I don't have any data, data on short-term rentals because I'm still working full-time not interested. So I haven't looked at what Matt's doing. I do know that if I ever looked into short term, I would want to make sure I purchased it where it made sense long term and wasn't an alligator. Yeah. Benefit from short term when you can. But the polar opposite in my market of what's happening in Matt's market. Hmm. Inventory is up. They're at stupid prices. Yeah. Okay. But, wish pricing. But I'm tracking which ones stay. And if they're on longer than a week or two, I'm making offers at the numbers where it makes sense to me. Awesome. And I'm, it's more and more of that in the last month. And I, th I think sellers are just now starting to catch on that the deals that closed last month went under contract a month and a half or two months ago right. when interest rates were totally different. And so now we're starting to see it, it's wish prices, but they're not as bad as they were a month ago. And this is what you and I talked about. This is I remember we did a video review of your portfolio. Right. And one of the answers was, what am I supposed to do all this cash? And I, I think I closed that video with basically saying something, Dion, you have no idea what's in front of you. This is coming. Don't rush. Don't feel like this is burning a hole in your pocket. And uh, it's coming. Right. Yeah. Very cool. So I guess I'll answer my market of Fresno, California. I'm seeing more listings. I would say very much with pricing. Uh, I am seeing most of the pain at two and three X, the median, which I would expect. Mm -hmm. uh, Fresno is not the Silicon Valley. Right. Average income is, I think, 64 grand. So the, you know, it's the average person can't afford those seven figure homes. Somebody's calling you. It's not me. It's not me. Dion, <laughs> you win. <laughs> uh, but no, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, so that's what's going on in my market. Uh, I am. Somebody really wants Dion. 
War dot. Somebody wants to buy one of your properties. It's a, it's a wholesaler calling you. It's the um, agent calling him saying he got the one that he did. Yeah, you got the one. You got the deal. I'm I <laughs> in, in, <laughs> I'm hoping to get a call back in like 20 minutes. Maybe when we're done with this, that would be great. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, so now let's talk about some national stats because the housing market, again, these are national numbers. Means nothing about your markets, nothing about your buy box. Just because it happens national doesn't mean it's relevant to any state, locale, or houses. First and foremost, new home sales, as I reported yesterday, were down 16%. Prices are up 20, right? Transactions down, prices up. Uh, this morning, pending home sales, which is interesting because again, new home, new home sales are contracts signed in, uh, what month are we in? So in April, so kind of relevant. Pending home sales, most relevant. Not closed yet, pending. Uh, home sales were down 4% month on month. Expectation was negative 1.2 or one, I think 1.6. On Monday, I called something, I, I called that it would be even worse. I thought this would be pretty bad. I even think I said 4% and we're here. Down 9% year on year. And inventory is building. Uh, they saw a 9% uh, jump in listings in a week. Folks, we have FOMO starting on the seller side. Wow. This is still, as Dion highlighted a moment ago, wish pricing. But folks, this is where it starts. That 9%, what was that inventory actually jump? Because I don't want us to, do, do we get that you have that hard number? I don't, it's, that that I, was? I don't know. It's, it's said, it said 9%. I think they were basing it on 760,000. So gotcha. that would have been a jump of 70,000. 70,000, yeah, sure. Yeah. But again, in a week. Yeah. Yep. Right. That's that's a hell of a jump week on week. Sure. Uh, again, I've been doing this for a long time. I look at these numbers all the time. Or I'm sorry, it's a month. It, it was a nine percent jump in a month, not a week. Just okay. Pull back. That was nine percent a month. Still crazy. Still a lot. Still, Still a lot. Still, what is that? Fifteen thousand a, a week. National numbers again. Well, and, and it's net increase. Yes, it's net so increase. Take off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so again, these are. The market is changing really, really fast. Yeah. Real estate does not, everybody wants it to crash tomorrow. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. As Dion highlighted in his review of his market, stuff gets listed. Right now we see FOMO. And oh, by the way, here's the deal, folks. This number gets reported. Every agent is going to call every seller who is talking about selling in the summer to list now. Yeah, this exactly. FOMO number is going to go up, 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 up. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Yeah. Why wait? You don't want to be the 17th listing. You want to be the third. It's right. going to happen. These listings are going to what, what I call is age out. Yes. Most of these wish pricing are going to get little to no action. If it's the perfect house on the perfect street in the best school system, it will sell. Fine. Most won't. So what's going to happen in about 30 days is, is sellers and agents are going to have uncomfortable conversations. Some sellers are going to say, let it ride. When it ages out in three in 90 days, which is the contract, we'll just, we won't move. Some will choose to sell, right? They'll take a price cut from wish pricing to something less. Price, price cuts, do price cuts in the MLS are going to go through the roof, I think, in most markets. Maybe not Matt's because he's got no inventory, but I think most markets will see a lot of price cuts coming. Here's the deal. And this is why I think investors should be way excited. What is going to happen is transactions crash is the cleanest and prettiest and most perfect properties will still sell owner occupant. What we are going to start to nibble on are the not perfect. It's not quite dialed in. It's clean, but not make ready. It's a great house, but on the wrong street. It's a great house, but it's too close to X, freeway, grocery store, whatever. And what's going to happen is there's still enough buyers and cash out there where the perfect houses sell. I was never in the market for Park Place or Boardwalk. Don't care. <laughs> I want the stuff that's not perfect. And oh, by the way, there's going to be less bidders. So um, the opportunity to do great deals, to do... Um, yeah, just to do great deals are going up. And again, I want people to realize in a recession, it's not always price. 
terms. I just completed an interview. It's why I was start late to start the three amigos today by 10 minutes is somebody who's been getting terms on apartment buildings. Mm. These were dumps, dogs, trash that couldn't finance. That stuff is, it could be a single family house. It could be a duplex. It could be a quad. There are ugly properties out there that aren't bank financeable. Mm -hmm. In a hot market like we just left, you go get a hard money loan. It don't matter. It's going to change, folks. Investors, keep doing the work. Be excited for what is coming. Uh, Matt, what do you think of all that? I agree. I think, you know, one of the properties that I bought, you know, it, the reason that I bought it was because I knew it couldn't go FHA. Exactly. And so every single person that was looking at the property, I actually told the agent and I said, you probably need to update the ad that it can't go FHA. She's like, why is that? And I gave her a whole list of reasons. I said, because of this, because of this, because of this, because of this. I was like, you know, it needs a roof. That's simple enough. Yeah, no check. FHA. yeah done. So I said to her, I said, that's what we're considering when we're putting our offer together for you is that we recognize that this is an FHA buyer pool market for this particular type of property. However, it's not going to go FHA. So if your people want to spend 25 or 30,000 bucks getting it FHA ready, you'll have no problem selling it. No doubt in my mind. She's like, well, they don't have 25 or $30,000. That's why they're selling. So what you're saying is, is there a motivated seller? <laughs> I hope people heard this. That is actually something I look at and fail to Absolutely. talk about. In today's market, if, I mean, that's what I mean by house is perfect. Yes. It means it will go FHA with very minimal repairs, three, four, 500 bucks. That's right. If there's a house, uh, this is going to happen. This is why you're going to see lots of properties go on, come off, go on, come off. Yep. Because- Right. I go look at a property. I'm willing to spend 200 FHA buyer will spend two and a quarter. They're going to win FHA buyers, VA buyers. I have a news for you. Your time is coming, but you got to make sure the house will pass the inspections. If you get a 225 house and it has 15 K in repairs, you don't got the 15. The seller ain't got the 15 FHA ain't going to close that loan. The deal blows up. Right. So that's a great catch. I thank you for bringing that up, Matt. What do, you, what do you got, Dion, on all of this? So as we're looking at that kind of data and we see that inventory should increase, they're saying it is. So eventually prices can come down. In video one today, we talked about people who have been calling for a crash for over two years. Hmm. In 2020 and in 2021, I made videos that didn't get a lot of views talking about no crash coming. Mm -hmm. In those videos, I had YouTube thumbnails from people who had called for crashes. You know, Ken McElroy with his 40% drop that you bet 10 grand on. And I, I, I put in a few others, but I put in one of Meet Kevin, who had used a clickbait title of the coming crash. Then the whole video was about no crash coming. And people called me out in the video, in the comments saying, he didn't actually say that. I said, yeah, but the video is what the, the title got you to click on it, right? Right. right. So I want people to, to process this. If... Two years ago, you could have bought a property and you only got a 10% return or eight or six or whatever is your goal in your market. You've had two years of awesome appreciation, two years of cash flow, two years of principal pay down. If your goal was to, and I'll just use round numbers, to get a 10% yield, but you kept hearing there's a crash coming. So you didn't take action. So you've been waiting for the crash and you, you've missed out now on two years of cash flow, appreciation, pay down, tax benefits, like all the reasons why we invest in real estate. Now it's two years later and a correction happens. Prices come down, but rates have gone up and you're able to find a deal that gets that 10% yield during a crash. Good job. But you missed out on two years when you could have done the same thing. And now two years later, if there's a crash and you lose your appreciation, who cares? You're not losing your principal pay down. You're not losing the cash flow that you got. You're, you're losing the time in market that really matters. So I understand why those videos get a bunch of views. When we start to see data that says, let's say there are crashes, a crash or a correction and prices do come down because the wish pricing doesn't happen. So now we're seeing that corrected down to where it should be. If it goes down farther and we see a crash, I guarantee in the comments, come at us. There's going to be people saying, you've been wrong for two years. Look, the crash is finally here. Well, yeah, right. It could be in two years. It could have been in four years. Eventually, the person screaming for a crash every day in every video will be right. Yep. Peter Schiff has been telling us to Peter Schiff has been telling us to buy gold for 40 years. I think he's been right twice. Yeah. The Schiff effect. Yeah. And I mean, if they really want to know, I mean, that might be the one thing that gets me to actually show my rent roll. Ah! No, and again, this isn't I 
I don't care. I'm not playing that game. Uh, <laughs> if if I see a if I see a pricing crash coming, um, I'll call it out. I what people don't understand is I want to say this matter of factly as possible. I want the Fresno real estate market to crash 75%. Yes. It will not affect my portfolio one iota. Not a bit. The only thing it will happen is I will buy a shit ton of property. I just, I don't even see a 7% crash coming. I would, frankly, I would make, I would have a lot more YouTube followers if I would just somehow convince myself that there was a crash coming. I just don't see it. It doesn't make me feel good. I think getting on the property ladder is awesome. I think getting cheaper prices is awesome. I just don't know how you do that in 2022. My experience says real estate moves a lot slower. My experience says the Fed broke housing. My experience says we, the first time home buyer who used to be 40% of the market is now 20. They're screwed for until wages go up. I don't see a healthy market. The real estate market is broken. The Fed broke it. But a broken housing market doesn't mean crash. It could just mean slow and stuck and dislocation and transactions could fall. Man, I sometimes I really wish I could just somehow create some straw man. Oh, whoa, look at that. If those three things happen, the crash coming. Just keep saying that. People will watch more. I just don't see it. If you're rooting for a crash, we are with you. <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah, please. Go. We are with you. The people that comment on the channel, the thing that they always don't understand is that this isn't like stocks and crypto up and down, up and down, up and down. Mm -hmm. There is a massive dividend, i.e. rent, that is paid to us every single month that is our cash flow. I think, so I think a lot of the asset, I don't care. I, I don't think care. a lot. I think, I think the audience thinks we're real estate agents because you and I all see real estate agent channels and real estate agents always want it to go up. None of us are real estate agents. We don't get, no, we don't. I don't get paid when somebody buys a rental. I, I send out a postcard. I don't get, I don't get, I got no skin in the game. Mm -hmm. I want prices to go down. Yes. I want to be, I want to be the only buyer again, like 2010. Oh, just don't see it. So it's, it's funny. There's a YouTube channel. I watch um, Javier, Javier lives in Phoenix. He's a, he's a real estate agent. Yeah. I forget the name of his channel. Mm -hmm. Great info. Cause I, I'm not an agent. I don't want to be an agent. I have like a list of reasons why I'm not an agent. So I watch it for his perspective mm -hmm. and very entertaining, great channel. But when he talks investor side, it dawns on me how many real estate agents just don't have a clue on, on how any of this works. Um, so Javier, I'm blown away. I still watch his content. I watch every video. I just know that when he goes to that, I just kind of tune out. Mm -hmm. Javier Vidana. Yeah, yeah. That's and it. the problem is, is a year ago, he was telling people the housing prices in Phoenix are too crazy. Don't take financial advice from a real estate agent. <laughs> Don't do it because yeah. they have no idea. No one, nobody. Okay, maybe 1% of people got out of high school, then got out of college and goes, hmm, I think I'm going to become a real estate agent after my 17 years of school. You don't do that. Most people just don't do that. And so at the end of the day, they don't have an economics degree. They don't have an MBA. They are only going to learn based on experience, thoughts, feelings, maybe what the guy in their agent in their office maybe said. It's all anecdotal. None of these guys, very, 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 very few have any real understanding of economics or have a master's in business that really understand how to operate a business and they don't understand what the market's doing. They are purely reciters mm -hmm. of other people's knowledge. They are never creating their own or very rarely. Absolutely. Dion, where can people find you? Right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom. And ironically, because of Javier's YouTube channel, it's one of the reasons why I'm able to do my live streams. Like I like his content. I like his real estate perspective from an agent's perspective. But I watch his live streams, and this is no insult to anybody who watches his channel. I was thinking, people will watch this? <laughs> I think maybe people will watch me. Yes. So I do my live streams Tuesday afternoons, 4 p.m. Pacific. Awesome. And Matt, where can you find you? Lumberjack Landlord on Instagram and YouTube, and Sunday mornings, 1130 a.m. Eastern time are my live streams. Awesome, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ciao. Thank you.